Hallo, es ist äh, heute Abend, machen wir den Kung Fu Tag mit dem Großmeister Huang Chen Yang aus Amerika, direkt aus Amerika. Und wir versuchen jetzt, das alles so gut wie möglich anzubringen. Es ist natürlich mit Zoom immer ein bisschen schwierig, damit wir da alles hinkriegen. Aber er ist da und wir sind da, so es sollte gut kommen. Ich sehe ihn nicht. Grandmaster Wang? Uh, yes. Ah, okay, now I see you. Okay, so Grandmaster Wang, very welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm honored to be, to be here. Thank you, <laughs> very polite, thank you. You're always so polite. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So in which year did you start with martial art? Around 1960, uh, and I was uh, in Malaysia. So I started learning some martial art, yes. At that time, I'm so young, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Just to try to learn something because for my health, yeah. Okay. Why? Because of the health? Have you health problems at that time? I have uh, asthma. So I have a problem, how to breathe. In. And then every year happens sometimes, how to breathe. So I'll take some medication. And then I, I, I heard martial art was helping me and my health better. That's why I started doing some. Okay, so it's around the 60 you told me. Um, how old you was at that time? Uh, 12 years old. 12 years, okay. And your health problem is uh, finished now? You can salute this problem? Yes, because uh, when I went to Taiwan to study, After I learning Tai Chi Chuan from my teacher, and then uh, since then, I never happen to have asthma again. Matter oh. of fact, you know the I have been teaching a, a lot of people Tai Chi Chuan, include uh, some college, and then uh, helping them. Special people have a uh, asthma problem when they learn the Tai Chi Chuan, they are helping them better. Wow, very great, very great. And then at what time you was moving to Taiwan? Around 1967. 67, yeah. okay. So beginning I learned the Tai Chi Chuan. After a few years, my teacher say, want me to learn some Kung Fu. That's why I started learning the Tian San Pai, you know. And then at the same time, I continue learn Tai Chi, but Tai Chi take a little bit time because the uh, internal need to take a little bit longer time to develop. And then my teacher afraid I'm boring, so he also like asked me to learn some Tian San Pai Kung Fu. This is why I uh, become involved in Tian San Pai Kung Fu. Okay, so what, uh, what was your teacher at that time? Who was your teacher? Uh, my teacher is uh, Supreme Master Wang Jiechen, and then He have a nickname, the Double Brussel King of China, because he, when uh, during the Civil War, he and some martial artists moving to Taiwan, and then when I went to Taiwan to study in college, so I want to learn for my health, continue for my health. So that's why, one of my uh, college classmate introduced me to learn from him. Was it difficult to get uh, as a student, to be, get accepted as a student? Yes, uh, my teacher very strict. First, you had to be at least high school education. And second, yeah, you had to have uh, some of the people start already study from him, introduce you, go to learn from him. And then otherwise they not accept that. And you can, both of them, it's no problem for you, right? Yeah, after people introduce me and then he accept me and then this is why I start learning from him. Even though after I moved to United States, I still, like you, you know, continue study from your teacher. <clears throat> I continue study from him until 1990, he passed away. Okay. And at that time, how was the, the classes? 
comparing to nowadays, so how was the class? Well, in the old day, training is completely different. Because at that time, you know, when we go to the, his place, first we had to warm up, do all the warm up, all the required, all the things you learn first. And after that, and then he will come in to let you show him, you know, if you remember, you learn from last time. And if you remember, and he will teaching you some for you to practice. And you practice until you remember very good, and then you go home. So most time you practice your own. And then if you have a, like some two men set, you practice with your other, no, the two men set. Yeah, your teacher not spend much time with you. Your teacher more teach you something you had to spend a lot of time to practice yourself. Yeah, it's completely different now. If they have a class, have a one hour class, no, at the time, you, everything you have to practice by yourself. How long was the classes? How many hours? No, depend individual because the, the class don't have a time limit. If you, for, for instance, if you are a beginner student, you probably spend one hour the most. And then if you are a more senior, you have a learn more thing and you also had to practice some with your classmate and then take a longer time, you could be two, three hours there. And then because my teacher set up the system different, when you're training the form, it's a, a certain time. And when you're training free fighting, have a different time. He don't want the people learning the form and then see the how we're training the fighting. The fighting is separate, different time. You had to pass certain tests before he allowed you to go to fighting class. Did you like the fighting class? Uh, we don't know what we like, we don't like, because that time we just, uh, everything, whatever your teacher say, you just listen. Because we completely don't have uh, your own opinion. Whatever t your teacher tell you, you just do it. It's of course, all the classes was in Chinese, right? Yes. And that so time, no. yeah, because at that time we beginner, we also not allowed to ask the question. Only allow you just practice. Yeah, because every time you try to ask your teacher at the beginning, I try to ask some question. He not he didn't bother to answer answer my question. You have because your senior will come to tell you say, hey, you're not supposed to ask. You're supposed to be practice, and then if you practice and then you become senior one day and then you allow to ask the question at the beginner they not allow you to ask a question all you all he wants is you just practice after how many years you get closer you got closer to your sifu or your master because i at that time i'm considered a so-called overseas chinese student i'm from malaysia so when the Chinese New Year and certain Chinese festival, he actually invited me to go to his home for dinner, for lunch. Wow. That's why we start get close. And then in 1981, I first time invite him come come to United States, and he lived with me. We spend at least 10 hour a day together. We just because we live in the same same apartment, okay, so. We a lot of things, we talking, I start knowing him more, he knowing me more. And then that's why we become very close, yeah. How was uh, this feeling for you at that time? You know, we are very respect the teacher. So we do try everything, do it for your own teacher. So I feel very honored to have a chance to serving him. And then very happy he have a chance to come to United States, United States to see the different part of the world. Yeah. So I'm happy, you know, and then have a chance to invite him to come to United States. Yeah. How was the United States for him? How he, the impression, I mean? He very impressed. Yeah. Because he see everything different. And then uh, the only thing you see, you see the different, big difference is the United States, everything is so big. Okay. Bigger building, bigger thing there. In Taiwan, my teacher have a small house. Okay. So when you come here, look, everything is new. Yeah.
So you slowly progress to the senior student, um, as you told, and uh, how many years you need to get a senior student in his classes? No, the, we learn the form. Here at a certain time, you come to practice the form. For instance, from six o'clock, maybe to 10 o'clock at night. No matter you are beginner, senior, you, you come in, you can practice, you finish after you learn from your teacher, you finish, you can go home and people come and go, not, not stay, not everyone stay at the same time because it depends how much you know, okay? So if you're senior, you become, stay longer because you learn, you know more things. Until certain amount of things you learn, he will give you a test. And if you pass the test and you allow go to the so-called fighting, learning how to fight, and okay. that's a different time, you know, because learn the form is at night, but learn the fighting is afternoon, after afternoon, okay? He said nobody allowed to come except the people learning the fighting. But how, how do you make it? Because afternoon, maybe you have to work or go to study. So how you can make in the afternoon? Because I'm a college student, and then you had to find the time because uh, arrange the time. You had to arrange the time because from two o'clock, three, four, five, six, that time nobody coming. Any time this time you have a classmate also learning the fighting, you can ask your classmate what time you are available to come, and we can come together and work out at that time. Because your teacher only teach you how to do it and you had to practice over and over. He not stay there watching you. He might stay in a stand up from his house from window to look outside if you practice or not. But you had to practice. He just tell you what to, how to, how to do it. And you just go ahead to work on that. Okay. And then uh, slowly you get better and better. Then your first milestone, what was the big uh, success for you, the first big success? I don't know how I think about the big success because we are the student. You know, we always listen to the teacher tell you whatever he wants to teach you. When you're up to a certain level, after that, he depends your ability, your physical. Sometimes he might teach you a different thing. Because not everyone done exactly the same thing after the, when you go to more event. It depends your physical, your ability. You know, if you cannot, for instance, if you are 300 pounds, you cannot jump. He's not going to teach you something have to involve the form, have a lot of jump, you see. So I pretty lucky is because I'm skinny, not, not heavy. So I probably can learn, not at that time, he can teach me most of the thing I can learn, yeah. In Shanghai have a lot of kicks and uh, jumps, right? Yes. So yeah, it's no, better to be yeah. skinny. Yeah, it's, it's in the typical Northern style form. And then a lot of uh, sound rhythm, you know, tapping. And then this is the typical Tian Shanghai form, yeah. And uh, what year do you reach the master level? I don't know. Because he didn't tell me you are the master. Okay. It's the people think you are the master. Okay. Or because your teacher never tell you you are the master. You just practice. You just learn. Because we don't have a like first degree, second degree, third degree. He have a, his different way to ranking you. Okay, and that is, is private. He never test in the public. You test each individual by yourself and your teacher. And then he will testing you, he will tell you certain things. You had to pass a test in certain time. For instance, he give you one month, you had to pass it in a fighting. If in one month, you not pass this fighting, you just say you pass four things, have one thing you didn't pass. And he, next month, he will retest the whole thing from, from, the, from the one you already passed. So this is the, how the way he do, do the thing there. And uh, what year he allowed you to teach? Oh, he, you know, he, when you uh, become, uh, he think you are become a senior, can helping you, somehow can help you become 
assist him something. Most time he teaching himself, okay. And we will need certain time helping very beginner. And then uh, in 1973, I was hiring, came to United States, and he gave me a certificate to prove I'm qualified to teach. Yeah. So I I think I still have my certificate somewhere. <laughs> Maybe in the, your school somewhere on the wall, right? I'm not in the school. I play in my house. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and then you progress with uh, always go back to Taiwan and go back to home. Yes, at that time, and then every time you know, at that time I have a so-called ICKF tournament, and also when I have uh, enough money, I will go back to study from him. So. I've been with him all, all about 20 years with him together, yeah, until he passed away, yeah. Because most of the people, when they leave the student, leave the teacher, very seldom go back to study. So I'm one of very few, you know, still went back to study from him, never stopped until he passed away, yeah. After he is passed away, do you have some, some Kung Fu uh, brothers, older brothers you can still follow? Yeah, but you know, everyone, because a lot of my seniors, they're not teaching Kung Fu anymore. So that's why, you know, only few people and then start teaching. And then, uh, so when he accepted me as become a disciple, and then that's why, He told me one day I'm the his only former disciple. I mean, go through the ceremony, yeah. Because some people accept disciple very simple. Say you are my disciple, but then officially go through certain ceremony. So I had to go to the former certain the ceremony, become a former disciple, and then he will give me a name. So Chen Liang is a name my teacher gave to me. Yeah, that's why. He called this is a Tao, so-called Tao name. So, if he be, if if so, some people claim when my teacher passed away, he said he is my teacher's disciple. That's not true because if you don't have a disciple's name, you are not true. You can because a lot of people when teacher passed away, start say I'm his disciple or I'm his only disciple, but for my teacher, it's very simple. You got to have a disciple's name. This When you only you, it's only you. You have this uh, ceremony, this baisha. Yeah, I, I'm the. He, this is what my teacher told me. Before I thought he had a few, few more disciples before me. He said he accepted them as a disciple because they learned the more advanced. They let him bow to the Tian San Pai founder, and then but go to the ceremony. I'm the only one. That's why when he passed away, I became accept him as a, as a, as a Tian San Pai Grandmaster. Yeah, in 1990. Yes, long time ago already. Yeah, 1990. Yes. How about the ICKF? He was first. He was in, in the uh, executive committee in the ICKF, right? Yeah, in 1975, ICKF. That time they called the. Chinese Guosu Worldwide Promotion Association. So they invite, you know, the people to have a first world tournament in Taiwan in 1975. United States we have a Grandmaster Lee also from the team. I'm also go there. And then after that, 1970, the next world tournament is 1978 and 1980 in Hawaii. 83 in Taiwan, you know, 86 in Taiwan. And then after that, there no more world tournament because after that become big change. Yeah, because uh, in 19, 2000, supposed to be have a world tournament, but they cancel that because the government not give them funding. They become a political reason because change the government, different political party become in charge. So they cut out the fund for promoting the Guosu. That's why ICK canceled the tournament in 1920, the year 2000. Yeah, 2000 yeah. New guy coming, 
and then become completely different. Uh, they did not support. And then I leaving them and then a lot of people leaving. So for now, ICKF, even they still have a tournament, hardly have a people go to compete. Yeah. You have still contact with them? No. No more. Huh? No, they actually kicked me out. They say I'm uh, not loyalty to them. Okay. They forget one thing. You know, they forget one thing before ICKF is not many people. I'm the one traveling around the Euro country to lobby the people go to go to Taiwan. Like you know, Italy, Germany, you know, UK, all these people, a lot I involved with them. You know, invite them go to Taiwan and then that's why ICK have, have a biggest term in 1996. That time they have about 50 countries, I believe, to attend the tournament. That's the only time. And after that, and then they, every, since they canceled the 2000, year 2000 World Tournament, so people start leaving. Even the new guy coming up, they didn't do the good job. And then people now go back. And then they're not happy about me because they think I'm, uh, you know, didn't support them. Actually, that's not true because they canceled the tournament. So people asked me to form the, another organization. Beginning, I don't want to do it because I thought when I do it, it confused. But since they canceled the tournament, since 1996, after that, they don't have any activity for four years, anything at all. So that's why in 2003, I formed I form the World Guosu Federation. It's from two, 2003. This is the first time I formed the World Guosu Federation. And then they get mad at me. They say, I'm not loyal to them. They don't want me <laughs> part of them. I say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the goal of the World Guosu Federation? You know, we have a three important I want to put, I want to do is first one is promote traditional Chinese martial art, Gosu, and uh, its physical, mental, and ethical benefit. The second is uh, create unity, friendship, harmony, and peace through Gosu across international boundary. And the other thing is elevate Gosu as a first class sport. And then we want to spot, sponsor first card event. So let people know Gosu is not a low class spot, it's a first class spot. This is my goal to form the World Gosu Federation and the United States Gosu Federation. And since then, we have a, a lot of tournaments in different countries and have a lot yes. uh, done, right? Yeah, you know, we every three years we have a world tournament except. You know, the last year because because, because the come you know corona virus, so everyone start you know stop doing activity and then the world cross tournament start postponed. Yeah. Do you know when the next one will be? It's difficult to say maybe. Uh, we don't know yet because it's supposed to be next year, but we're still waiting for Italy to give us the information. Yeah, mm. I think, I think uh, the, the whole situation has to be fixed before we can fix the date, right? How's the Europe situation now? It's different from country to country, but slowly it's a little bit more open. And we have the vaccine in the most uh, countries. And slowly, slowly, I think we make progress. But I can, cannot talk for, for every country because mm. I don't know that. But I think slowly, if we do good, we will be, we will be natural, normal like before. Yeah, we, in America, we are now very well because the government already, you know, no have an emergency required. Everyone can do it pretty whatever you want. I don't know your country, Switzerland, how's that go? Switzerland is quite open right now. We have certain uh, rules we have to uh, take care, but also the, the lesson, the COVID lesson, we can do nearly normal 
what is uh, like a success for us because they close all our schools. Mm. It was like closed down. It was, it was a hard time for us. I see. And then your career, you, you have a lot to do for the for the Kofu, for the Kofu community worldwide. You have to a lot of tournaments, championships all over the world. And I know personally, you was uh, travel to different countries to teach your Tianjin Pai, right? Yeah. Uh, for promoting Kofu, I've been traveling over 30 countries. 30? Yeah. Okay. 30, 30, trio. Yeah, over 30 countries. I've been uh, over 30 different countries, yeah. But uh, not every country learn Tianshan Pai, only some. And some in South America, some in Europe, yeah. M mostly in the United States, yeah. How about the progress of, of uh, Kumoshu? How will you uh, talk about that? Yeah, I'm very happy to say that a lot of people know the name Kumoshu before people don't know, okay? This I had to give the credit to you guys because you guys helping promote them too. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> because because uh, to promote Gosu is not one person, it should be everyone. Yes. If not everyone working on that, nobody know. Because at least now a lot of people know Gosu, their name. Yeah. And now about the Tian Chan Pai, you have formed an association for Tian Chan Pai. Yeah, we have an international Tianshan Pai association. So, you know, Master Michael Huang has been helping me a lot. He spent a lot of time to helping me uh, to organize this. And then uh, we try to more communication from uh, especially from uh, foreign countries, South America and some Europe. Yeah, because uh, the thing we need to do is open up to let people know. Yeah. So you make, uh, over this time, you make a lot of uh, Zoom uh, teaching, Zoom classes? Yeah, not last year, because last year, you know, you know what happened last year. But now we start, yeah, I start traveling some to do some seminar, yeah. And online teaching? You did online teaching? Excuse me? On, online, via, uh, via computer, you did teaching? Uh, the in, in, um, um, Master Michael Wang is the one do all this online teaching. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, special to teach uh, through the computer, right? It's very special. Yes. But now, you see, the school start open up, the people start come back uh, in person now. It's better, I think. Yeah, because we're allowed to, to open up, yeah. How about uh, fighting? Is it allowed in Maryland? I think so. Because the term, because since they open, because now the, the government now require relief uh, emergency, so allow we open competition, so allow fighting everything. Okay. It's, this is our tournament in uh, this month, July. Yeah, we have tournament and then we allow, allow fighters. Yeah, so far we have about 60 fighters registered. Hmm, it's quite cool. Yeah, it's, it's always at the end of July, right? Last weekend in July. Yeah, the last weekend in July. I think July 20, 23rd, 24, 25th. Now, how many countries uh, are registered by now? No, very hard to have foreign country to come because uh, especially a lot of countries, they not allow them to come to the United States. Yeah, most this year probably most is uh, from uh, United States people. Foreign mm -hmm. countries they have to come because some country they they have to certain require they may not have a like uh, all able to follow the require just why they cannot come yeah yes I think so I also was talking with Grandmaster Martin about this and he also have mentioned this it's maybe very hard to come to the tournament yes maybe how about learning all these cool forms. I know you know a lot of different forms. How you can remember all the moves, all the forms? Before, you know, we had to write some notes, you know, write out a note. Yeah, because now it's easier because you can film it, video. At the beginning, it's very hard. Yeah, because uh, that's why in the old day training is uh, you spend a lot of time to practice, try to remember as much as you could and then at that time, the only thing I can do is write down like a note, you know, 
is not have a video at that time because thing change now you can everything you can video and then you can learn can be real very easy yeah. it's better to remember right yeah how about different styles so you practice about so you're talking about tai chi and tianzhong pai how about for shui chao you yes. also practice right yeah there's a shui chao yes is it actually you know if you really learn a certain amount of time you know they complement each other help each other each each thing help each other they may be training the different way but at the end the goal is the same thing at the end so you have any advice you would uh, like to give to the new generation because new generation now new masters will slowly grow up so what is your advice Yeah, they have. Everyone had the patience, and then for you to get better, only one way: practice, practice, and practice. No have the other way. You can read the book, give you a lot of knowledge, but the book is not real. You need the philosophy. So you need to actual practice before you can really understand what is in there. Yes, that's true. How about the fighting experience? You know the the way we I don't know other people how the way train the way we training is a different because we have separate select a certain technique from the form and then emphasize the practice and after you skill the technique and then you try the combination training combination how to use that how to use a technique and after that after you the last day become freely you can use anything you want but at the beginning you have follow the procedure certain thing you have to know first before you allow to actually fighting but at the beginning how to fight still limit the way how to do it until you reach certain level and you become open up say no limit you can do anything you want yeah It's a good explanation. What is your next step? Your next goal you like to reach? For well, now, is it because the I'm more overseeing now the let a lot of other other to more very important role in the USKSF and TWKSF because all people involved can make the organ organize to make the organization better because everyone have a certain expertise yeah i'm more overseeing the thing and then the other people play the important role yeah and personally what you like to do as next what's your big goal for you as a person i want to see also more pop- more popular <laughs> also a good uh, goal <laughs> Yeah, because Kosu is it? Like I say that is now is the first class sport. Not only for certain thing, they good for your health, also for discipline, well being. Yeah, not every sport have a this all this kind of benefit. Kosu have a this kind of benefit. How old you are now? I'm seventy three. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> you have to think about that. How old I am? <laughs> I know. I know. I am how I am. Seventy-three. <laughs> It's just a number, right? Yeah. Well, you have to admit you're physically not as good as when you're young. It's not that about that. Yeah, but I still keep pretty good shape. How about your daily training? You still practice? I still train some, not like not too much, because my my job now is see what the young people are doing the thing. Helping them if they need certain help, give some advice. Yeah, I'm all like overseeing the thing instead. You know, actually do a lot of different physical thing because when you get older, your physical not as strong as when you're young. Only you can only can limit how much you can do. Yes, I understand. But you still look very young, so it's very very good. Yeah, now I had to admit I look old. <laughs> <laughs> you look young. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not so old actually. <laughs> But you look okay. good. Sorry? You look very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Always exercise, many hours. Yeah. I try my best. Your school doing good? Yes, we have a ten school here in, in Switzerland, and now slowly we we have new students coming because over all this time we cannot get new students, so we only lose students because they cannot uh, continue the, the teaching the, the lesson, so they go away. But we cannot get new one. But now slowly new students coming, especially children. We have a lot of children coming, and now slowly also the adults coming. How about in you, in USA, in your place? Yeah, we are very okay, back normal. Yeah, we. So a lot of people come back in school, to, to actually in right. school practice. Yeah. How about uh, losing students? Did you lose students during this time? No, at the beginning we we lost some students. No doubt about that. Yeah. And then um, now everything picking up back, yeah. Great, great. Hopefully, by the end of this year, everything back to 100%. Yes, this yes, I hope too. <laughs> Would be great. Yes. For your personal life, um, what do you think about traveling? Did you like to travel again? Not too much. I already traveling too many country already, <laughs> because uh, now I'm more. Spend some time teaching seminar. Yeah, this is what I'm doing now. Yeah, because uh, Master Michael Wong is running the school. Yeah, he actually yeah, do a lot of thing for me. But you you plan to come to Europe? Sure, if the people invite me. <laughs> <laughs> so if the World Tournament in next year in Europe in Italy, I'll be there. Yeah. I hope you will be there. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. It's difficult to organize right now, as we talked before, but I think we can do it. I think we will, we will do it. Yeah, because I, we, we, we don't have information from Italy, so we don't know what happened. Do you have any good story about the time you was learning your martial art, your Do you have any good story about your master and you, and what you like to share with all our viewers? I don't know. So my my master, he know the painting, he know acupuncture, he know a lot of thing. You know, I don't know how you know so many thing. It's I don't know how he have a time to learn all that thing. Yeah, because he is incredible. Even he, seventy two years old, he still can teach a drunken form. You know, okay. you know drunken form is a he had to fall to, on the floor. When he's 72 years old, he's still teaching the Johnson form, so he's very incredible. Yes, I can believe. Yeah, but maybe at that time the the business, uh, normal business, go to work is not the same for him as it is now. I don't know. Yeah, the thing changed. Yeah, because now the people training different than the before. Now it's uh, more like class. You pushing the student to do the thing. In the old day, is you are the one had to go ahead to do it. Yeah, it's a complete different. Yeah. Which way you like more? Honestly, I like to have old way because old way can make actually make the student better. Mm. But the But time is because you need to have a in here you have a class to pay the bill. Okay, to yes. make the students come together. And teaching, and then different than before. Yeah, before is like it's, like I say that it's individual, want to learn, want to practice. Okay, okay. I think we have already a good uh, amount of information from you. Do you have something you like to share with all our viewers? We well, have uh, how many viewers we have right now? Uh, we have uh, 10 viewers right now, not much, but I know until tomorrow we will have few hundreds of viewers. So maybe you like to, something to share with them? No, I, I don't know. So many things. I don't know where to, where to start. Uh, if you like to know, you ask, I will try my best answer. Okay. 
So in, in the, the Western thinking and the Chinese or the Asian thinking, if they learn the martial art, do you think it's some different? You know, I think the big difference probably is mental. Yeah, because the thinking different. Yeah, because like I explained earlier, because in in the Western world, you're teaching the class everyone together. In China, everything is individual. You see, for now, I think the China they also changing to the class too, because since this is a modern way. Yeah, more I think that now the people more like people to push to do something. In the old days, people more like you willing to do something. Yeah. Yes, I know that. I remember that as well in Hong Kong. So the teaching way was so different. That's true. This is yeah. also what I see. And also in Hong Kong right now we have classes, but、uh, this is easier for the sifu to organize. Because、uh, if you have classes, you, you can start six o'clock until seven o'clock is this class, and、mm. so on. But、uh, I know in the old times, the sifu have to stay at the school nearly the whole day because always some students come in.、Mm. That's why it's very a long day. I think it's also for the master better. Yeah, it's a completely different way. Yes, that's true. Okay, so I think we come to an end. Thank you very much, Grandmaster Wang. Thank you for have have me. Of course, thanks a lot. Please stay here, so I will close the session on YouTube, and then we have few minutes we can talk by ourselves. Thanks、okay. a lot. Stay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Liebe Zuschauer, herzlichen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Ich hoffe, wir haben können profitieren davon und haben zum Mi Englisch können folgen. So, dass man、äh, da etwas von uns rausziehen mit dem Gespräch mit so einer bekannten und auch renommierten Persönlichkeit wie Großmeister Wang Yi. Danke vielmals und einen wunderschönen Abend.